All right, guys, so we are back with a brand new React tutorial. I'm going to try my best to make this as short as possible, but with a lot of details, okay? So we're going to take a look at the React Context API, and I'm going to show you guys why it is so powerful. So let me go ahead and just show you a quick example. So right now, I have this uh, application, very, very simple application, and you can see that I have a contact form uh, component, and I also have a contact form results component. These are two separate components. If we take a look at the code, you can see that right over here that I have a contact form right over here and a contact form results, two independent components. Neither one of these components take in any props. Okay, neither one of them, you can see that there's no props involved whatsoever. Now, whenever I type something inside this input field in contact form, contact form results is able to display anything that I'm typing in here. And how exactly does that even work? Like what exactly is going on? Okay, so pretty much everything that is happening underneath the hood is because of the React Context API. So why is this so powerful? So let's say if you wanted to create an application and you just come across a situation where you need two or three or maybe even more components that need to share the same data but you don't want to pass in props constantly to all of those uh, to all of those components. So one thing that you can do is you can set up a context, okay? You can set up a context that has all of the initial values that it needs, okay? It's pretty much like, if you've ever used Redux before, it's, it's not really the same as Redux, but it's very, it, like the goal of it, you can actually use React context uh, more often than Redux if you ever need to actually share state or share data between each component, okay? So you can pretty much create one context that can serve as a uh, centralized store for, you know, as many components as you, as you want. And whenever something needs to be updated within the context, any one of those components that are wrapped in between the provider of the context can actually update the value of the context. So every single component will receive the brand new value, okay? So right now I only have two components. I have contact form and contact form results, okay? But if I wanted to have more components to listen to the updates of the context, I can definitely do so. So this is definitely a good way for you to share data between com two completely isolated components, two independent components, Okay, and it's actually, uh, it makes it a lot easier because let's say if you have like very deeply nested components that need uh, properties of another component, it's all the way up, up on the top level. It's gonna be very annoying having to pass down the component over, uh, pass on the props over and over and over again. So what you can do is you can uh, create a context, you can wrap the provide, you can wrap the component inside a context provider and then the component can now subscribe as a consumer to the value of the context. So you can receive the value, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and obviously look at an example. I'm not gonna leave you guys empty handed with no example. So let's start from scratch. So let's go ahead and just, we're gonna pretty much create a, a replica of what we have here. We're gonna, we have a context form and a context form results. So I'm just gonna create a simple, uh, like a simple replica. So let's just say, uh, let, let, let's create a checkbox. So checkbox.jsx, and then we'll create a component that shows the value of checkbox. Show, or let's say checkbox result .jsx, JSX. Okay, and I know this is a fairly simple example, but like I said, the whole point is just to show you guys how this works so you guys can uh, use this knowledge to uh, build something even more cooler, okay, or something more complex. So let's go ahead and create a component, export const checkbox. Okay, and like I said, none of these components will take in any props at all. So checkbox result right over here. Okay, and we'll just return a div for this one. Okay, hi. Okay, so checkbox is gonna have a simple uh, checkbox. Uh, it's gonna have a simple uh, checkbox uh, element, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that whenever uh, we check the box, it's going to update the value to check or not check. So let's first let's have the checkbox. So type is a checkbox. I think this is how uh, I think this is how you do. It. I've never actually used checkboxes. I haven't used checkboxes for a while. Uh, check. Okay. And um, let me see. Uh, 
we're going to go ahead and render this component inside root.jsx. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll render this right over here. Okay, so now let's look at our app. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, did I do something wrong? Okay, I think, yeah, I think that was a problem over there. I, I don't think, yeah, I can't actually have, uh, I actually can't have a text field over there. We actually need to use a label. So let me do that. Uh, let's do label. Uh, let's do check. Let's just do check me. And then the ID will be check. Okay. So the DOM knows that this uh, labels for this input. Okay. So I can check this. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to obviously listen to, uh, we want to listen to um, whenever this checkbox, the value of this checkbox is uh, being altered. So we're going to use the on change event. So what we're going to do is we're going to just simply console log this e.target.checked. Okay, so it's not dot value. It's dot check because we're dealing with a checkbox. Okay, so now if I were to check this, true, false, true, false, true, perfect. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we basically don't wanna have any state variables inside checkbox. Instead, we wanna have, like I said, the context to handle all of our, um, all of our, uh, all of our state, okay? So checkbox context, we'll call it that, dot JSX. And we're gonna go ahead and actually use the create context uh, function that comes from the React library. And we're gonna go ahead and just create a context. So I'm gonna do export const checkbox context is equal to create context. And this is a function call, and it takes in a default value. Now for this default value, we're gonna pass in uh, two, or we're gonna have two properties inside the object. Okay, we're gonna have one parameter, uh, and that uh, that parameter is an object that has two properties. The pr the the first property is just going to be uh, the value for the checkbox. So let's just do uh, checked. We'll set this to false because it's a boolean. Okay, and then we will do a second property called update check. And this is just going to be a function. It's just going to be a function that doesn't do anything for the time being. Okay. We'll actually have to create the uh, implementation to wrap around this uh, function later, and then it's good. And that's how it's and that's how we're going to be able to control the uh, the uh, the context from being updated. Okay. So what what we need to do now is we now need to provide the context for the component for the components that need to actually share uh, these uh, these fields. Okay, so if you actually look at this example over here, I have a contact contact form field form fields context provider, and we're gonna basically do the same exact thing, but instead we're gonna wrap the checkbox as well as the checkbox result component. Okay, so these two, so you can have as many uh, contexts as you want, and they can be completely separate from each other. So since these contexts have nothing to do with each other, um, I don't have to like you know wrap them like I don't have to nest them. Okay. So you can ignore the top part, just pay attention to the bottom part, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's get the checkbox, checkbox context. Not sure why. Let's, get, let's try it again, checkbox context. I don't know why sometimes it chooses to be annoying. Checkbox context. And what we wanna do is we wanna, it has this provider that we want to actually use, okay? And now you must pass in a value, especially if you're using TypeScript. If you're using TypeScript and if you don't pass in a value, it's not it's gonna give you a linting error. But since we're using JavaScript, it's not going to actually throw an error, but it'll throw an error inside the console, okay? Uh, but you wanna make sure you pass in the value. Now for the values, you're basically going to pass in the values for whatever you had set for the initial uh, state of the, of the checkbox, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that uh, we can actually just simply pass in the values as is. So, for example, checked and update, update check, update check. Uh, let me actually name this update checked. 
Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a state variable at the root. Okay, so inside this root function uh, or this root component, we're going to create a checked and then set checked. Okay, so notice how we're calling the, the setter, the setter uh, variable set checked instead of update checked. Okay, and what we are going to do is we're simply going to make it so that uh, use state is going to by default be set to false. Okay, and what we need to do is we need to create a function called up, uh, update checked. So const update checked. And this is going to take in the value that we want to use to update the states of checked. Okay, so checked is going to be the actual uh, Boolean value as you as you saw earlier when we console logged the checkbox, true or false. So it's going to be either true or false. And we're just going to set checked. So we're going to call this function to actually update checked okay and what's going to happen is it's just going to update uh it's going to update this checked uh state variable which is actually used as the initial value of the uh, of the context okay so these values are actually going to be what is actually going to be consumed by each component that actually needs the actual value okay so hopefully all this makes sense. So we'll, we'll and we'll walk through it again. Okay, so don't worry. So now what we need to do is we just need to wrap all of the necessary components. So we're gonna have the checkbox and then checkbox result. Okay. And again, I don't know why this thing is not auto saving. Like I'm saving it, but it seems like it keeps on uh, giving me annoying issues. Okay, great. So we have these two components. They're completely separate from each other. Okay, we're able to uh, click on the checkbox. Now, what we need to do is we need to go to the checkbox component first. Now, this is the component that's actually going to update the context. The other components are just going to uh, consume the context and display. We're not going to, I mean, it, it can, those other components can also update the context too. But in this tutorial, we're not going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and call the use context hook, and we need to pass in the context that we want to uh, that we want to consume. Okay, so we're going to pass in the checkbox context, and we're going to take in the update checked uh, function. Okay, and that's going to be this function right over here that was passed down uh, to this context over here. That, so now other components can subscribe to the context and they'll be able to consume these two, uh, these two fields. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and inside a uh, checkbox, we're going to go ahead and uh, on the on change event, we're going to update checked and we're going to pass an e.target.value or not the value checked. Sorry. Okay. So that's going to pass that in. So update checked is going to be called. It's going to call this uh, this roots function. Okay, this function belongs to the root component, and it's going to take checked and it's going to update the value of checked. Okay, and now what we're going to do is inside checkbox result, we're going to consume the actual context and we're going to display. Uh, we're going to use conditional rendering to display uh, whether or not it's true or false. Okay, so let's first. Consume the context. Uh, not sure why. Use. I don't know what's up with my. I don't know what's up with my. Uh, IntelliSense. Use context. From React. Okay, that's kind of weird, but okay. I guess I'll just copy and paste that since. This wants to be annoying. Yeah, none of my intel my intel is not picking up. That's kind of annoying. Okay, that's fine. So let's go ahead and just evaluate checked. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't even think this. Uh... Okay, let's do this. So let's do this. So if checked, we'll go ahead and say checked. Otherwise, we'll say not checked. See. So now if I click on this, it will say checked, not checked, checked, not checked. Okay, pretty simple, 
but the whole point is to show you guys that we're sharing uh we're sharing values between two components without actually without actually passing in any properties at all okay so that is the whole takeaway from this tutorial okay and like i said these two uh these two uh uh, providers, these two contexts are separate. So whatever I do here will not affect the checkbox. Okay. So like I said, the reason why you'd want to use something like React Context is to share data between two components or two or more components uh, without having to actually worry about passing down props uh, all the way down to the, you know, like you don't have to keep on passing down props over and over again because that can become very, very tedious. Okay. So hopefully this video made sense to you guys. And I hope you guys uh, liked this video. If you guys did, feel free to subscribe. And I have a Discord server. You guys can join the Discord server. And uh, you can ask questions. You can talk with other people. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.